Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you joining us, joining us tonight for our ninth Humber Mirror Life interview. Henderson Springer, a former cricketer, a right-handed batsman, and a right-arm off-break bowler who played primarily for Barbados and Western Transvaal, is our guest in the studio tonight. In uh, 2006, he serves as the West Indies A-team coach. And in 2007, he assisted the West Indies national cricket team. Thank you, Henderson, for joining us for this interview. Henderson, you're on mute. I am here. Yourself. I'm mute, but I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Okay. So tell me, um, what were your memories of growing up um, in, in Bishop's Road? It used to be Bishop's Tennis Road. It's no Bishop's. Bishop's Road, St. Lucie. Tell me, tell me a bit of your background from down there. Uh, sort of people you interacted with, etc. Well, um, to me, it, it was it was a tremendous upbringing down there because everything we did was based on the platform of either discipline or enjoyment. And if you want to add a third, you can you, you can add a third of learning. I, I came from a family where most of the the older ones in the family went to college or university overseas. I mean, through hard work, my mother was a school music worker, so she ensured that. Um, things went, 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 went pretty well. You, you know, you had some hard-handed people. It was not a situation where only your family administered discipline or good advice, but anyone in the, in the district. It was something like, if I had to call one word, if I had to use one word, it, it was like a village academy. Yeah. You know, where, where everybody was responsible for every, everybody else's welfare and proper upbringing. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, um, would you like to share some of the, the insights on your family and how your parents impacted on your life when when uh, Bishop Hill, Bishop Rose? Yeah, my, my my parents my parents had had a, a a tremendous impact. I mean, most of my grandmother who's gone home now, but my mother, as I said, she was a school music worker, hard worker, coming from a warm parent family. Um, I met my dad for the first time when I was forty six years old, you know, and I had to retract. I had to discuss with him what happened to me in the last forty six years. Uh, I know we're not going to go so long tonight, but. Um, Yes, uh, my, my uncle, he, he was privileged to go to university in Canada, one. Two, the other uncle was privileged to go to Cambridge University. My mother never went to secondary school, but in those days they had something. She she was a cook, so she liked what we would call the house craft center. So she would learn to bake and, and cook and do X, Y, and Z. And the, the cousins as well, too. I mean, it was a big family, originally coming from St. Andrew, and ended up in in Bishop's Road, St. Lucie, so it, St. Lucie, so it, it, it was good. You had motivation all, all around. Cricket was was played, soccer was played. We, we had separate seasons. One was cricket, one soccer, swimming because you know uh, Bishop's Road probably would be one of the most northeasterly parts of Barbados. It is very close to the last village before you get to River Bay. You know, and we would go to River Bay, do a lot of swimming, diving, fishing. Um, we would walk the coast up. You know. You, to behind Point Corner and Little Bay and and, and one other way, but uh, it was a tremendous upbringing. It was a more physical upbringing because we did a lot of running, we did a lot of climbing, we did a lot of throwing, all these all these type of things, you know. And the people who had gone outside of St. Lucie to learn, they came back and they bought their lessons, whether it be a, a lesson in sport or whether it be a lesson, an academic lesson or a lesson of experience. Yeah, and back then they had the North Point Surf Resort as well. That had at the time uh, the only Olympic pool. I remember they had inter school aquatic sports up there. Um, so that was also within within your range of activities. Yes, sir. And, and they also had the, the, the naval facility as well, too. The army facility who right. used to compete, who used to compete in, in sport. This would be before the defense force went there. You had some, it was some U.S. soldiers who used to be based. The Navy, the Navy. Yeah. Every staff, yeah, correct. Okay. They, they, used, they used to be there as well. So, and they used to be compete in in our soccer competition, the St. Lucie Cricket League, the Cr St. Lucie Football League as well. Too, they used to be very competitive, fiercely competitive. Okay, all right. 
So let's let's go back to your memories of Palmer Mirror School. Could you could you bring us up to speed on how Palmer Mirror helped shape your life um, in sports, in cricket, and in other areas as well? Oh, I I, I of course you would have to go for your books in in, in what we call the off season now when you vacation time. But they went to come here the fifth of September, nineteen seventy five. And I remember they had Master C. De Vere Moore going up the stairs to enter the platform from the left side and falling over. I would never forget that as long as that. That, that, that was my, you know, you know my, my, my first thing in here. But to see the structure and to see the gusto with rich people sign the school song, it wasn't, it was up boys then. Mm -hmm. And then when the girls came, it became up then. Mm -hmm. Right, but it, it, the first impact, man, it, it was lasting, and the, the school intimidated by both the size of the school, a little bit of history, and, and no one told me the history. I read those plaques on the wall, I saw those pictures on the on the on the wall. I know some of them have gone home now many years. Many and years. That that that, that, that that taught me that that gave me a glimpse into what this place is like. You, know, you see Barbados scholars on one side, the academics on one the side, and the, the, on the other side. side. Ah. As you enter the hall and you turn around, you saw a picture of the Commerce School cricket team that won the first Virginia Cup in 1940. You know, and, and it was a tremendous, man, a tremendous. And, and then you get a chance, you got a chance to meet some of the teachers that had the impact. No two teachers were the same. But who, you was, had, your who was your favorite? Harry Seeley. Without, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He taught me some good mass. He taught me to be respectful. But Harry Sealy knew a fair amount about sport. So anytime we ran in trouble with mass or anything, we would change this topic quickly to cricket or something like that. So we, 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 could, we can ease away. But he didn't forget, but he, he, he treated us down in the lower school at that point in time really, really well. I remember Mr. Skinner from, from, from the, the, the woodwork. He was a St. Lucy man as well, too. And uh, all, all types. I don't want to, uh, I mean, no, Mr. Bombero. And, uh, Mr. Bombero, Spanish. You know, Bombero, Spanish. You know, and you go right, right through this right Charlie Pilgrim, mm -hmm. and a whole. I don't want. I don't want to call you enough names. No, I can go on for the next hour. But everybody had an impact, whether it be significant or whether it be a, 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 a bit, a bit less. But the big things become a mere way, and some of them were not even Commonwealthians, but they went into a system and a culture that demanded this is the way that things should be done. This is the way that things should be taught, and I was the beneficiary of that. But come here, tremendous impact from first day right to last. Okay. No, you would have played 26, first class, and 31 list A uh, matches. What was your experience like during your first class cricket de debut? My, my first class cricket debut came in 1988. And as a young boy listening on the radio and, and watching Shell Shield cricket after tea, you know, you wanted to be out there. And, and, and when I got there, I, I pitched myself to, am I really am I really here? I don't think I did anything significant to be here, but apparently people saw that, you know, it was a good good cricketer. You had the numbers and stuff. But beautiful impact. Again, with the environment, you had Gordon Greenwich, you had Desmond Haynes, you had Malcolm Marshall, you had Joel Garner. And later on, you had Franklin Stevenson as a Moses. Some, some good servants of Barbados cricket and some good servants of international cricket. You know, and again, environment, discipline. Malcolm Marshall, nice man, but a leader. Gordon Green is a serious man, a professional to such a stage that he would he would fold his dirty his used clothes, whereas he would just throw them in a bundle in the bike. He would very, very neat and tidy. And woe be tidy, the person that went around him was an untidy person. Okay. You know, but it was a tremendous and traveling, and not only meeting the Barbadian players of that time, but the regional players as well. Okay. All right, Henderson, just an administrative thing here. If you could tilt your, your, your camera a bit downwards, you're, you're kind of off frame, right? So you're okay. using your you got me there. I got you there perfectly. Excellent. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, no, you, you know, you were exposed to a very high standard of cricket. Uh, so a very early age, too. Um, who was your cricket coach? And what is your what was your inspiration? All right? Um, 
and who inspired you the most during that period? Um, the, the, the first cricket coach, obviously, there was a gentleman who's now passed on, a Barbadian who used to live in Bermuda called George Rock. He used to play for Spartan. He was from deep in St. Lucy, Pai Cornet. He was related to the, the family who owned the Rockland buses of that time. And he inspired me from there. Moving into Comir now, you would have um, Mr. Harold Brewster, who um, he had his way of coaching. He was more, I don't think he was a very hands on man. He, he, he was more um, discussion, you know, discussion, go and do your stuff. And as it went on, then you took cricket seriously, you're progressing. The coaching got more intense as you went on. When I left school and you, and you went to, to Spartan, I played for Spartan, you had people like David Holford, Tony Howard. Into the Barbados team, you had William Bourne, who, who was the Barbados coach at, at, that, at that point in time. And they progressed through a number of coaches, all of them with, with, with probably with similar motivation, but with different philosophies of, on how the coaching should be executed. Yeah. So were you also involved with any type of coaching at Palmer Mirror? No, no, I, I, I kept my coaching until I left Commonwealth. You know, I, I was learning the game and learning coaching and, you know, and I, I just after I left school, I started doing my, my coaching um, qualifications and badges, as you would call them. Okay. So you were the former head coach of the, of the BCA, the Barbados Cricket Association. You were also a national first, pla first class player. And you rejoined the BCA as head coach and high performance instructor following a two-year stay with Cricket West Indies. Um, where, you, where you are Cricket West Indies, you're responsible for, for uh, the coaching sessions in Barbados. Right? Um, this comprises of the Everton Reach uh, Cricket Center for Excellence, uh, clubs, schools, enhanced coaching, uh, education, uh, coaching equipment management courses and uh, high performance architecture. Did this did this place a lot of pressure on you? Um, you you were now getting your, your your hands around the subject matter of coaching, and then you you have to get into all these ad, um, supporting uh, administrative roles uh, with equipment and training programs and stuff like that. How challenging did you find that? Very, very challenging. It, it, it brought to bear the difference between coaching and cricket. The difference between coaching and sport, because I believe coaching and cricket are two different things. Um, the, the, the first tent with the Barbados team, that, 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 that lasted for 16 seasons um, with the Barbados first class team. And, and sometimes they're proud to say, and I always <coughs> tell the guys, I, I, and they say, well, Springs coach me or this. I, I said, well, I, I, I don't think I did a lot of coaching. What I did, I think I created the environment for these things, to, for good things to happen. You know, because of some guys, you're a different guys. Some guys you have to be hands on. Some guys you can stay back and be implicit, explicit, depending on, on how how things. You know, those first 16 seasons with the Barbados team, they were dotted by stints with the West, with the West Indies team. I worked with the West Indies team in 2006, as you said, with the 18. But I also was part of the 2007 coaching squad with the World Cup as well, too. And off and on, between then and 2016, I went to champion trophies. Uh, champion trophy um, competitions, all those types of things. But now, and I've had the privilege to coach both the West Indies senior team, men and women as well. And, but but it, it, taught, it taught me a lot because my, my thing was to go, learn, come back to Barbados, teach, pass on, whatever the case may be. And, and that coaching to me that has been tremendous. I met, I met some great, 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 great people with good coaching and um. I, I am a, an outside of coaching, outside of cricket. I'm a quiet, more internal type of per, person, person. But once I get the coaching hat on, then I start to, to drive from, yeah. from, from here. Right, it has um, been a tremendous experience. The Senate ever. Pardon? No, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, but I mean, the Senate excellence, that, that, that in 2009. Right? As a tribute to um, Sir Everton Weeks, they were trying to host the best young players in Barbados, uh, different age groups. And um, I wrote that program for 10 consecutive years. And you, you can say it could produce Craig Bratt and all the guys that play for the West Indies now since 2009 that I play for the West Indies now, play regional cricket, youth cricket. And I'm proud, I'm proud, proud of that. Um, 
I mean, the privilege of seven weeks before he passed. And I was lucky enough that before Sir Abbott Weeks passed away, um, he, he signed me, he said, man, it was Springs, thanks very much. And, and to me, that, 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 that brought me real down, really. I, I felt so humbled, you know, that a man of this time, you can tell me, thanks, very right? sorry, that should have been the other way around. Right? And it's still going, but it is scaled down a bit because we focus on different areas depending on what competition is, 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 com is coming up. Coach okay. education. I've been part of the coach education system basically since 2004. So it's not only really learning about coaching, it's learning about enough that you can be able to pass it on because there must be a continue. Mm -hmm. um, no, Mr. Producer, we want to start keying up the, um, the photo show so that we can uh, stimulate some discussion around some photos that Henderson has shared with us. Um, <clears throat> So if we start from the, the beginning, uh, and listen, perhaps you could walk us through some of the significance of the photos you've, you've shared with us. You seem to be muted again. Yeah, very young there at school in, in a science class, actually, you know, trying to get some work and doing some drawing. Doing, drawing. I did a very good job of drawing that hibiscus. hibiscus. <laughs> very, very good job. Um, <laughs> Mr. Smith or who, who, who biology? I think um, I can't remember. Mr. Bart. Bart? I think one was there. I think yeah, I think he was there. Mr. Bart. Yeah. Mr. Bart. Mm -hmm. Peter. You had a whole number. Whole number them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one one is one is there. Yeah, doing the um the science class, trying to get some name ahead because I realized no that I was glad I actually did because um coaching has gone in a more scientific direction. And if yeah. you don't have a good appreciation, even biology and your biomechanics, your movement, and a, a, a few, you know, I felt really I did a good job of internalizing some of the things that I mean, would have been taught there. Right up in the Jamaica shirt, I think that's the first time I went to Jamaica. I was in Holland there, my first contract I got there, so I had my Jamaica shirt swimming because we're so in who's on flabbergasted by these places that every place I went, I bought a t shirt because mm -hmm. the Barbados team didn't have the official training gear then. Okay. Over to the yellow top, doing some training in the gym because I believe that the coaches must have some semblance of training, fitness as, as well. You know. Yes. So doing my gym work down in the middle. Of those three guys I'm on the left when it was a lot bigger. My dad is in the middle, and my brother is on the other side. And they were in Texas at that point in time, so I made a visit up there. That's the first time I saw him, and that is the last time I saw him as well. Okay. Is your dad still, still with us or? No, he, he passed away in 2015. Okay. But it must have been really, it must have been really exciting to meet him after all those years. Yeah, it was a tremendous, it's, it's a real experience, tremendous experience because um, uh, as a coach, you do a lot of observation and not only in coaching and watching people and stuff. And I, I would look, we would talk, I would look at him and the man would do the same things in the same way that I would do them. The man would move the same way, the man would lie down the same way, the man would lie to myself. And I, I, I only met that man for three weeks, you know, in my whole life. I said, my whole life. We had, we had some good discussions. We had some very, very good discussions. But again, you got up, up in the left hand corner, you got myself, Ricky Alcock, and Adrian Armstrong. I guess people would know those, those gentlemen. Ricky was good enough to win a scholarship to Malvern College. I thought I should have won a scholarship. But then I told Ricky years after he had won the scholarship that I'm, I'm glad that he did because I would have destroyed that scholarship totally. Because I, I, when I was nothing at all to do with anything <laughs> remotely academic for that period of time. I don't think Ricky much either, but that is a different story. He learned a lot when he went to England and he realized that this system was different. You had to comply, then you complain. The work has to be done. Mm. You have invigilators for your homework. You have your house sets and and. You know, you're, you're driving you to learn. And learning is a non-negotiable. And Ricky got in that environment. He did an excellent job, an excellent job, an excellent job. Over to the right side, me and the youngster there that was making my first class debut in Trinidad. Me bowling in Queen's Park Oval and Brian Lowry making his debut. That was his second game. I thought it was his first, but he told me it was his second game at Queen's Park Oval. So I didn't get him that time, but a couple of times after I did. Um, in the middle down with the big trophy that is in, in Wales, a place called Haverford West, where the tongue of Major Cecil Newt. 
and I played for that club for four years, and that is a trophy that we would have won. It is one of the most prestigious trophies in Southwest Wales in cricket. It's a short form tournament, not 20 over, but it used to be 22 over, so we're not far out. And um, the other one is playing a normal first everything game against the YMPC, which is really probably getting me out or making me as out the third man, the usual story. Again, in the middle there, myself, Adrian Arsenal and Ricky Alcott, years after. Mm-hmm. You know, friends, you know, the friendship. The friendship, you know, the mere friendship. Listen, right. though, um, you, you mentioned this this visit um, in Wales um, with Major New. Um, there, there, there were some other. There's a, there's a little bit more to the story about Major Note. For those who don't know, Major Note um, has a strong history in common Mary. As a matter of fact, our hall is named the Major Note Hall, correct? Um, and I believe you were instrumental in hooking up with Major Note's family. Um, you could give us a bit of background on that. Well, just, just quickly, I got a contract to play in 1992 in a place called Halford West in Pembrokeshire in Southwest Wales. I didn't even know what the place was. Anyhow, I, I went playing and coaching and one day afternoon i was standing by the notice board you know just having a scan of teams etc and a little blonde guy came up to me and said to me do you know major new his name was garth new he was 12 years old I looked at him and said i know of him but i am sure you don't and he said to me yes he was my grandfather i said was he said he passed away a couple of months ago because major new passed away a couple of months after i got and I, I, I called his mother over and I had a word with her. She was six foot tall. Her hair was blonde and nearly done by her waist. And she was a dairy farmer. She said she, she was born in Barbados. And they used to live up where police sports club is now. So well, cool. That's my school. I went to common Mary's. Oh, my mother is still alive. Good. I said, where does she live? She said she lives in number 42 Horsehorn Rise. And I was so amazed because I lived in number 18. and never knew that she lived there. I lived a couple of doors down. Right, and then I went to meet her with a couple of other old common Marians, I called Judson Jones, he's probably passed away now, and a number of other people. And had a good interaction. I mean, when she saw me, she opened the door, and like it didn't matter if it was a thief, a rapist, a mass murder, whatever the case may be. Once I went to common Mary, that woman opened the door and embraced me, and she gave me a history of, of old common Mary, which was, was brilliant. She's probably gone home by now as well, too, you know. But it was a tremendous thing, and I, I took those days, he didn't have the arm. Um, the computer so i took pen to paper to write to whoever was the chairman of the old scholars association then to let them know that mrs kathleen Newt was still alive and a couple of months a couple of years down the line they invited her to barbados to unveil the plaque in the hall that represents the major new hall as it is now. very very interesting story how small the world is how small how small is you are somewhere you know very removed from barbados and you you run up with you butt up with someone who is very uh intimate with uh some of the historical people in your in your in your history oh yes uh, okay i gotta i gotta hate no on a, a, a i don't know if you can say a controversial question but uh we did pretty well in our last outing against australia um but what do you think about the, the west indies cricket team well, I must give them kudos for winning that match. I thought that that was a tremendous win, you know, and, and the match tilted coming and going and the West Indies got the benefit of it. But some outstanding performances from the young players. I don't want to mention them all because it's a team. So uh, it's a team, a, a team effort. But I only think that over the years, West Indies cricket has been the summation of what goes on in the region at all levels, at all levels. And... West Indies cricket doesn't have enough money to me to seriously compete on that basis over a period of time with some of those what you call well-to-do rich teams. They can afford to make financial mistakes. We can. India can can afford to invest twelve thousand dollars in a project, and it fails, but they will find twelve thousand twelve million dollars next week to do it. We can't. We can't. We, we can't do that, and it has a serious impact. One. On our coaches, the way they're trained, two on our infrastructure, and I always take practice as the easiest example. In the West Indies, most of our practices are weather dependent. We've got few indoor facilities. There's one at the University of the West Indies that needs cleaning up. There's one in Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad. But where else? 
all West Indies players don't come from Barbados and, uh, and that. Then you look at the amount of money that people are compensated to be part of cricket. It may look like a lot. It may look like a lot, but it's a lot when you when you reach the highest level. A lot of guys around West Indies cricket make sacrifices. They call it sacrifices to work for gas money. I like the sacrifice part. Until I see the money is there for a guy to say, okay, let me stop being a teacher and become a cricket coach. Then I would say, okay, money is in this cricket now. But we suffer from a lack of that. And we have broken down a system as well too that had a better up and a foundation of discipline and accountability. Discipline and accountability. And one of the things that hurt me over the years of West Indies cricket is there was a time when the players... We're like we're, the, we're running the show instead of the people who should be running the show. Management. Instead of the management, you know, the, the players, you know, nobody, and I've traveled the world with cricket because of cricket, nobody is bigger than the game. Nobody, many have tried, nobody is bigger than the game. They come, they contribute, and they leave. They leave the game. But I think we suffer because we've brought on a lot of things that work. Again, we go back to the Village Academy. How much cricket is being played in the, in the village? It's not necessarily structured. How much impromptu cricket is being played? When we had all types of discussion, you've got, you got more, more traffic in Barbados now, so you can't use the rule like one, like one time. But I think as a team, we can, we can do better once you bring that structure, accountability, and, and, the ad, ad, and certain parts of the administration hold to certain standards not just drop the standards to be associated with John, Jack, or Jill. Mm -hmm. that, that is a problem. And, and it, see, it soaks in both directions. It soaks down, it soaks up. When we were young people, the priority was test cricket because that is all we knew. And then it was test cricket. And then it's one day cricket. Now you've got T20. And you've got some guys now coming up in schools and stuff. Test match cricket, too long. One day, maybe. T20, that is it. But I have worked out the players with the, the highest skill level are playing T20 are these those who've got a good foundation of long form cricket because it gives them the, the, an opportunity to hone their skills over a period of time. It is not about slogging. It's not about slogging. It is a more structured attack than just all enough slogging. Although there may be times that when you want six runs off of one ball or whatever the case may be you may have to do that right. but you, you you can't build a game you can't you, you can't build a game off slugger not for long term but look at the guys that would have played t20 cricket in the region whatever types of whatever types of cricket they can hit up from here to spike stone but it's only six what are the other forms of the game that they would have excelled in and you find it difficult to find you find it difficult the t20 Murder bowling. You see, when uh, the longer the game goes, it gives them more opportunity uh, to score runs. They are scored, and most of the time they are scores. Okay. All right, uh, Michael Horse, Mister Hess Natrum, uh, would like to come on now and uh, pose a question or two for you. Hess, how you doing, sir? Hi, Handy. Charlie, thank you. Hi, yes. hi, Hess. Yes, Handy. How important is <laughs> Fit, fitness, physical fitness, diet, and mindset to the cricket, to cricket, and how you see that. But I, I, I look at fitness as just one aspect of preparation. Because if you look at you prepare your teams, you got of easy physical. We always deal with physical, but you still got mental, tactical, technical, and lifestyle management. Yes. We, where we call it fitness because we're from the old school. Now they call it strength and conditioning. Yeah. It is critical. It is critical. It's very, very important. You know, and we had always back in the day of doing our fitness thing. We used to do a lot of running. And you can know as a watcher, when some season is pending, because you see people running on the beach, you see people running on the road, you see people running around the garrison. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people, do you see a lot of running on? You see a lot of walking? Yeah. You see a lot of walking. Lot of walking. Yeah, you still are walking, but you, you don't see that running and that fire and, and that, that testing. The fitness is critical. All the aspects of fitness, speed, strength, flexibility, agility, 
dexterity, you can call it all those aspects are critical because at some point in time in your particular sport, whether it be cricket or not, you've got to be you've got to be up to the chase. And we get beaten in many, many times in cricket because the other people, the, the opposition, sorry, not the other people, that, is, that, that, that doesn't sound nice. They play a longer game than we do. Yeah. They play a longer game. Let, let me give you an example of fitness and, 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 and it's easiest sense. Now. I used to work at the BDF sports program. Ten years and five months to the day. I was cricket, Kevin Miller was football. And those BDF footballers would run the garrison, they would play, they would train, they would sand, they would this, they would push up, they would and they would go and play a BFF game. Not pretty, effective. And they used to play something called the long searching ball. Like this here. Up front drive. And they would run and they would run and they would run the tail off in the opposition. The the run for long, run them into the ground. Yeah. That's one aspect of fitness. And then they start building on the technical because the fitness had to support something. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you get you get your phone. Well, you don't build your house backward, do you? No. You get your foundation first, and then you go on your fitness, and then you got your strength and your speed, and, your, and all types of awarenesses, if, if that is a word. But it, it is critical. It is critical, and, and that is a specialist area. That is a real, real specialist area. That strength and condition. Yes. Um, Andy, what is the difference coaching the ladies versus the men, if there's any? <laughs> you, 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 with the men. You can coach cricket with the women you got to coach emotion okay all right same game they look at it different the things they can tell the men i cannot tell the women in that way all right coaching women it, it, it was a beautiful experience you know i have never knocked on so many bathroom doors since i was alive when you go into a men's washroom facility you pull the door you push the door and go uh -huh. it taught me it taught me a lot it taught me a lot. It was a you had to be very careful what you say, what you do, when you when you did it, how you did it. But it, it was beautiful. Do, do, the, and the women are demanding because if the men get in ten sets, they want ten cents too because mm -hmm. they say they were they were in the same crest yes. as the men. So they, they were their world cup winners, and you're putting pressure on me to go and ask a question. And it is good that a lot of them have come to the top of the class. Uh, for example. Haley, Haley Matthews is a top class player. DeAndre Dotton is a tremendous sports person. Because she, she's, old, she's not only good at cricket, she's a javelin and she's this and that as well in her career to time. But there's a young lady called Kaisia Knight, who I think is the best female keeper I have ever seen in my life. Well, wow. so they can get to a certain level, mm -hmm. need the motivation. And that is why they always choose certain people to come around them and work with them. You know, because they get a certain amount of humility and compassion for the things that they do. They may not do it as a way, like men do it. They may not be hard and rash and, and strong or whatever the case may be. But they get it done never, nevertheless. And I'm glad that there's a there's, there's a focus now and a drive to improve women's cricket all over. All over. And some of those women are quite capable of playing some very, very good cricket. As you, you, you gentlemen will have seen women's cricket getting better, a lot better. Yes. In the early days, they just suggested to be a knock around one on the garrison with softball and man, everybody got to do mm -hmm. right. But it, it one skills, cricket, yeah, hardcore planning, noise, X movement, string, brute force, whatever. The other, cool, calm because you ain't coaching cricket no more, you know. Yeah, <laughs> cricket no more. You're coaching emotional, okay. You're coaching and the good thing is that if you have a woman as an assistant as well or a part of the management, it makes your job a bit easy. Okay. Sounds good. Now, Hendy, when you went to school at Common Mayor, who were the cricketers and athletes and stuff that you looked up to that you wanted to emulate? You're, you're mute. Okay. No, I, I don't think uh, Cricketers. No, I, I play. I would be privileged to play with this. I like George Reefer. I saw that George Reefer was a high class yeah. batsman. I thought he was. And he and Pedro Corbin were a good combination. <laughs> I, think, I think two completely different people all together. Yeah. And I, I say that is what that is what made the, the, the combination. Um, as far as fast bowling was concerned, 
Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. Pedro Stanford, and then there's a gentleman who I haven't seen for years. I think he was a primary school teacher called George Bryan. Okay. Right. And I never had a lot of discussion with, 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 with these guys, but just to, Pedro for sure. I spoke to Pedro. We played together. But mm -hmm. George Bryan probably only spoke to him once, once in my existence. But okay. I saw him quick, mm -hmm. quick, glass and small. Yes. I, I played was, I played second division with Gladstone, and he was a spinner then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gladstone Small was, 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 a, was a tremendous, a tremendous sportsman as well, too. Yeah. Well, of course, of course, you got you got uh, Ricky Alcott, Ricky Alcott. Yeah. Out of out champion. Good bowler, good man, hard ears. But <laughs> He's a hard some things that I never thought he would have achieved. Uh -huh. You know, I never I don't think that he thought he would have achieved, but good discipline as well. Good parenting foundation and a school at common mirror yes you can't help, you can't help but to to drive forward and, 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 and thing but as far as the athletes go yeah the young, young gentleman called magilla he i call him a young gentleman he's older than me yeah i think magilla was a was a good runner yes i like pearson paris ronald boyce uh -huh. right soccer i played a bit myself we had some good guy evans curtain you had <clears throat> You had a Thomas Jordan. Um, oh Lord, my these these guys these guys come come to me now, but they can't call. I can't remember all, but, no, no, but no, no, there no. were influences all around that was positive yeah, for you. I watched. Yeah, that was positive. Yes, Ralph Ralph Holder with the hockey. He yes. was a cricket as well too. Yes, yes. He was a, he was a cricket too because he used to hit some balls for me to catch. I never knew a guy could hit a hockey ball that hard. Yeah, I used to catch these yeah. things. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous, and then you may nick one or two hockey balls as well because they were the closest thing to cricket balls. You couldn't get the cricket balls, so we had to, we we, we had to, um, I think, modify what we what we're doing. But all at table tennis, mm -hmm. Jeffrey Bostick, again, mm -hmm. Ralph, Ralph Hall, as the old people were sitting knocking about there. Yeah, and you had some guys who would cross over. You had, for example, a guy like Paul Pitt, hockey yeah. player. Yeah, 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 yeah. Made two centuries to the school. Uh, okay. You understand? Mm. Play soccer on the left side because he's left left foot. He probably can play in the play sense, but he's a left side. Mm -hmm. A bright young gentleman and a handsome guy as well. So those mm. are guys who would call the all rounders at school now. Yeah. And those guys who are able to take off those, those boxes. You know, some mm. guys were two men, some guys were three men, some guys were five men because they were sharp as well too, and they were well uh, well, well, well well dressed. Yeah, I don't want to talk about Mr. Lewis yet in relation to dress. I guess it will get down the road. <laughs> so, but yeah, you had a lot tell, of people. But tell us the story of how you met another Commemorian outside of school, David Whitaker, that influenced you to come to Commemorian. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that was that was his Lucy man. That was long <laughs> vacation, summer vacation, man. And there were a camp. There was a camp at St. Clement's Vicarage, way down close to Rockfield, and. So all these guys there, every time that there was a camp day, we would go and line with the boys and the guys from town. Because that time I got to school at St. Clements. Clement, Clement, yeah. And I aspired up the road, but I know what I aspired. And we saw David and some other guys left on the batsman. Can't get the man out at all, but we throw the pelt in and get to talk or something. <laughs> we still go to school because you can imagine a guy at school. Could be so difficult to get out. This is senior school. No, I am at primary school, but the senior of the primary school, the senior part of the primary school, after such a thing, and you can't get it. I said, "Just go at Com, just go at Com here." So I can tell you what, I am going to go to school at Com here too. I read in a couple of terms. I was at Com here, and I saw him. I was him, saw him playing, but that was the latter part of the career. But I had achieved. I had told him what I was going to do, and I had achieved that hard work. So he can let him down with me. It matter what we are next, because he probably wouldn't remember me when he left down there. But he was my first interaction with a common man. I had never, I had not spoken knowingly to any uh -huh. common man prior to David Whitaker. Well, that was a good recruiting pitch by him. <laughs> well, well, just like saying he got the common man. Yeah, but it, it, it enthused me, no doubt, bro, because no, nobody from, we came from, went to common man. You know? We had some guys that went to coach and pray. That was a North thing then. Mm -hmm. and I don't, I had one guy who lived down with Bishop's Road, deep down with St. Lucy, as you know, who went to the Lord's School. Mm -hmm. Nobody went to come here again. My uncle went to college in Pride, then he had an opportunity to go to Harrison College, but nobody said, well, you're going to pass. 
you're going gonna, you're gonna to go to Conway. Nobody at all. Not in that area. Yeah. I remember you had mentioned, you had mentioned caution study, I remember, like, like Mr. Brewster, that was sick and lap his legs and and take the administrative route you know a view every now and again the boys doing something wrong maybe make a comment but there were some there were some other common Marians that showed you the hands-on approach to coaching uh you want to get a bit more into that people like hardcore and not a lot well, of yeah people like well both of them yes and not, well, not people like hardcore hardcore uh, um tremendous influence on me again um i think he's the reason i become a coach because i saw when i saw him come into school and he got the puma track suit on and he put my shoes and the puma polo shirt i said to myself i won't be like this man <laughs> i don't know it would be so much hard work but that was a start and he influenced me from seeing the man dress and then an active participant he got his hand to the plow as a coach then mm -hmm. probably because he was a lot younger than mr Brewster was mm -hmm. you know Harcourt played hockey for the school. I remember playing hockey. Harcourt played cricket for the school. Harcourt sent me off an evening for kicking a guy from Cordon Party. All sorts of things. <laughs> but he, not one of the boys, even if he was one of the boys, there was a line drawn of respect. So you are the student, I am the teacher. Doesn't matter what we are doing. We, I think that line still made. The line has gotten thinner over the years. But I still, I still like to maintain that line out of, out of respect, right? And he had a tremendous influence. I mean, the way they went about um, doing this stuff, everybody fit, you know, set the example, put his hand to the plow. Where Mr. Booster was more, Mr. Booster was considered to be all the more advice, and he would give you all these talks about guys that were played with him back in, he was the Frank World's brother in law. And he would give you, give you the stories that happened then in 1914, and he would talk about. That 1940 team, you know, that won the first division, and he would talk about all those men, and, and I take them off one by one, and and I start over the years to find out where they were, and I can tell you that, um, you know, Crick's funeral home in Saint Lucia, that man that owned that passive C O B Crick, he was the Crick in the picture at Common Mirror. <laughs> you understand? Johnny yeah. Lucas. There was Johnny Lucas tall white man he died in canada many years ago and you go through the people that you go through you go through you go through and and um charles allen was stephen allen's father yes. you know right mm -hmm. and, and i watch all those guys and i've been lucky enough to be able to in a manner speaking track down something every single every single one to miss booster because mr booster never used to go too far he used to always talk with the english footballer danny blash flow he thought he was great footballer because he was the first man that used to do the dummy and he would show Harcourt would be part of it, you know, and, and, and driving you to want to be to really him. I have respect for both because both serve their purpose in a very developmental, developmental way. Okay. Henderson, in your cricketing professional life, who are the cricketers that you looked up to when you played them and you were like, wow, this guy is difficult to get out or I want to emulate this person? Who were those people that stuck out to you? Well, as a young man, my heroes in watching we used to watch cricket obviously there was a gentleman from one was called Stephen farmer oh yes i had never correct. seen a man do the much that he did with it. all rounder correct he was a good he was a good all-rounder he was a yes. very good all-rounder um he didn't play much for barbados um i was always enthused with the ball swinging and it, it is an amazing thing that for want of a better term it is like the white guys can swing the ball a lot more than the black guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the quality of the ball or the quality of the bowlers. Mm -hmm. But then you had Harold Farmer and Peter Farmer at Windward, though the second and intermediate. They were they were doing considerable damage damage. Hence the Robinson. Mm -hmm. You know, and you would talk about those things. Batting. I always had time for Nolan Clark. I thought Nolan Clark was a tremendous batsman, making mm -hmm. a lot of runs in ball. You would talk about he would used to bat the target. I tend to like the well, it's part and it's part mm -hmm. people because they, they had a good cross section. David Murray, one of the best Barbados, bat, not batsmen, but wicket keepers I would have ever seen. Yeah. And people discount his ability as a batsman, but when he was at number three, he used to score a couple of runs for Barbados as well. Yeah. He's a but I want to welcome on board um, Parkour Wilson. 
another illustrious Commemorian. Hi, Harko. How are you doing? Hey, Charlie. What's up, man? I'm cool, man. All right. Hash, it's a pleasure to see you two nights in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Friends, how are you going? Good for now. Thanks, and so. I good. I good, man. Okay. 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 But, you know, let, let, let me say, you know, I, I, I'm really thrilled, honored. It's a pleasure to really be a part of um, this interview with, with, with Springs. Um, you know, I, when, when I started my career at Combermere, uh, Hendy was still at school. And, you know, he always had this fire in him, this desire to do well. A, an excellent sportsman, a sport, sportsman. He, I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I have a way of, of, of saying to some of the guys, you know, that, that they are, even though they were good, they are underachievers. I'm not going to say Hendy is an underachiever, but Hendy has done so much in terms of sports. He represented Combermere cricket and football. Uh, in those days, living in St. Lucie and having that, you know, you know, how, <laughs> you know how transport was, how it is now, how it was then. Yeah. So Springs was, um, was one of those fellas that you would see him at school. You know, when he last people to leave school, and when you get back to school the next morning, one of the first people to be there. Going for, is, is Rock Field, right? Springs? Close enough, close enough. Bishop's Road, just a just 100 yards from Rockfield. Right. So, so you know, so you'll be going deep in the north. Um, you know, I, I saw I saw the potential from Hendy to lead, um, that, that to, to teach, uh, to be, be someone to be there and a, a, a sports person, a, a sports person and a team man. A very 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 structured always very structured and you know took things organized so it was really no surprise when handy took that route to become a, a coach um i know the the you know after leaving school you know one of the things that for, for handy was representing barbados um and he and roland you know who became very close still very close and and they played a lot together uh at some point they they shared a residence together and so that bond with, with roland you know is really is really a deep one and i think these guys uh you know thrive up, 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 up off of each other it's really heartwarming to see the 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 the, the strides that handy has made and I, I i'm going to say something here because uh, I don't think a lot of people really know this. In 1997, prior to my going to, to Cayman, and, and Hess last night we spoke about trying to get individual coaches for sports. Yeah, Cricket is the one that needs not just an individual coach. Cricket in school needs coaches. Yes. Because on Saturdays, you have two teams playing. And, and I think sometimes the third team, because you might have a team playing in the school's division, you may have an intermediate team, a second division team, and then a school's team. So you could have three teams. If you have one coach, then the other two teams might have a teacher, but that's only adult presence. Yeah. It's not a coach. So Springs came on in 1997, and he was leading our cricket at the time. Now, I know, I, I knew that it was going to be difficult for us to keep Springs for a long term. Because maybe we, are, we, are, we, we could not, frankly, we could not afford to pay Springs for his services. Springs was given back to Combermere. Mare. And we knew that at some point that he, we, we, we were going to lose him. So then we did we did lose him. He took up the post. We went from to, there to to BDF right right away, right Springs. Right to BDF. Right. So which, which was a really work. big stepping stone in his career, and I think from there you saw the development in 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 Springs. Um, so it was no surprise that he 
has he's ended up where he is today in terms of coaching. And in fact, I will go and say that, you know, I wish he had tried to go after the West Indies coaching position. But I, you know, he's qualified and he has a temperament, the knowledge, he has what it takes. And I think, listen to him just now about when, when, when you asked about coaching the ladies and he said coaching emotions, you know, I, I, I do not, I don't know if you ask that question to any of the male coaches in the West Indies setup, if you're going to get that answer. Yeah. Because they, 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 they don't have it. They're not as deep into it as Springs is. They're very methodical. And, you know, we, we share a lot of conversations, um, not as much as we really should have, but, you know, from time to time, we would share our conversations and talk about the cricket and how it's going. And, you know, and, and it, it, it's sad to see how our cricket has gone. Hear him talk about, you know, what, you know, you, yeah, you, you can't stop a guy from going to, 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 to wherever he wants to make the money. Um, but at the end of the day, the board has to be in control. You know, I remember some some years ago, the West Indies, it used to be West Indies Cricket Board of Control. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like they have lost right. control and lost all control. <laughs> so, but, you know, I, I, I must say that Springs is very, a very inspirational guy and a pleasure to be around him and a pleasure to really speak with him and talk to him about the, the, the cricket and the happenings in cricket. Um, I think that right now, he, you know, his post where he's basically the chief uh, the head honcho uh, in, in terms of you're talking about development at BCA, you know, um, you know, I, and I, I really admire and appreciate all that he has done and is doing for um, Combermere, Barbados, and West Indies cricket. Cool. Of course, thank you very much. Yeah, right, good man, no problem, Springs. Uh, and I, I, I must say that that year, '97, when Springs uh, was 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 helpless out. We won the under 15 competition, right? The DT competition. Um, I know people after that, um, and we went through the Roddy Eswick era, you know, and people saw that era as the, as the, you know, really the, the where a lot happened. I think that then it was the fruits you now of Springs Labor now being born. Great, great. All right, just I just wanna I just wanna uh, before moving on read a a message from uh David Strong who's having some te technical difficulties getting on. Um so you apologizes to all. Um, um and he wants to compliment you on being a great asset to Barbados and the Caribbean and a true Pomerian. So, so Springs, that, that is a comment from David Strong, who uh, was having some technical difficulties getting into the studio, but he wanted to convey that message to you. you can thank you very much for me, please. Hendy, I can share a joke with you when we had guys from St. Lucie in our class. We used to tell them, when I lived so far, you had to bring a passport to get to come here. <laughs> and, and that it was closer to St. Vincent than Barbados, so there was big sanctions. Yeah, but I, I got I got a lot of that. I got a lot of that too. I do. <laughs> but but, but some I bought on my own. Um, I I remember Mr. Charlie Pilgrim and and Mr. Pilgrim going home now, and I know I don't know if he can forgive him. We we did to me. Uh -huh. and I was asked to bring back the football jersey, to Mr. Newton, the football coach. Mr. Newton said, "Boys, please bring back the jersey on Friday." Friday, I did not bring mine. And we were all calling to the office. I have a big prefect now. And Mr. Pilgrim gone through everybody. And he writing all the time. He ain't paying me the money because we're decent people. He said, Why did you bring back your jersey? Boom, boom, this guy. When he got to me now, he said, Mr. Spray, why did you bring back your jersey? I said, Sir, Mr. Newton told me to bring it back on Friday. But he didn't say which Friday. <laughs> and Mr. Pilgrim stopped and looked at me. He said, Mr. Spray, what are you doing? Where do you live? I said, and I shouted loud, sir, I live in St. Lucie, hoping now that the man would say, bring it back on Monday because this is Friday. Yeah. Man, you live in St. Lucie? He said, yes, sir. He said, good. You know where you live. The quicker you leave, the quicker you return. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> I left school at 10 30, went to town, went to, to home Bishop's Road, come back, brought back the jersey, and then I go back home in the evening. What time did you get back to come here? I got back at quarter three. <laughs> <laughs> I go back at three o'clock. It'll be six hours. <laughs> but six hours to get it. Uh, but you know what? You know what happened? You had to go through immigration. I never, <laughs> I never did it again. I never, I, as a Mitney Mark, the simply said, Mrs. Prayer, uh, a responsible man in school, you know. Uh, in fact, all sorts of You don't be here bad, don't get in trouble. Uh, That's where live. You know where live in St. Lucie. Well. I never went and bought it back. Well, left school. Hey, tell me, tell me. Um, you you have we, we all know about your cricket and stuff, but do you have any other pastime sports things that you really like? No, just, well, watching sport, yeah, that's thing you really like. I, I had a another cricket related uh, uh, um, hobby. It, it was collecting cricket neckties. Okay, a uh, cricket memorabilia. I had over three thousand ties in the collection. Wow! Over the over the years, I've been doing it for a long, 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 long. Absolutely. Long, long. Not so many, know. not so many. West Indies caps, yeah, but official caps, yeah. The guys give me the caps now, but that was mine. I used to watch all sport, soccer, whatever the case may, may, may be. But not to say you, you, you're taking them in a sport like how we used to be in cricket, cricket and soccer. I support my friends in playing hockey, some in basketball. I like to watch. I like to watch parades, all those those, those type of things. But not to say that that, that you're steeped in this type of thing that you're just passionate. Cricket is my passion. Is my passion. I have found everything that I wanted within cricket. It has taught me all the lessons that I need, needed to be, to be taught. And every time in the Oval or at work or wherever, dealing with situations outside of cricket, I'm running right into trouble, which I often do. I ask myself, Springs, this is a cricket situation. How would you deal with this? And I, I, I usually get, I usually get the, the solution by doing it that way. Okay, this is the question that that um has to be asked because I remember I remember back the back in the days of apartheid and the ban that the world had placed on South Africa, the penalties that that players suffered for actually playing in South Africa. Did you did you ever um face or experience any difficulties with racism during your career as a cricketer? Well I can, to me, racism is not a thing that comes up and slaps in your face. I always say that racism is a subtle denial of opportunity, right? I played for Western Transvaal out in Potchefstroom, where those youngsters played over a couple of days ago. And that, in those days, I read, I read for four years, and um, I read in September 93. And out and out, right wing Afrikaans players. It, it, it is a university town. It used to be called the University of Potchefstroom then. It was the University of Northwest. And true, Sir Carl Hunt. The late Sir Carl Hunt, a coach at the university, coach and stayed at the school. Um, a year down the line, the first class province was Western Transvaal, and I was asked a captain then. I think I am the first black Barbadian, probably, to have a captain a South African provincial cricket team. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And it, and the, the conversation was good. I, I, I would, I would be taken all over the place by the Africans. It was only myself and Mark Levine, the late Mark Levine. He was a tremendous cricketer as well too. He died when he was in his twenties. He was a tremendous cricketer, um, and he was set up now to go to play, stay in South Africa, and marry the lady to play for South Africa down the line. He passed away in his twenty, in his twenties. But I never had any blatant people come to me and say you are black. I have heard. People called Courtney Brown black at regional grounds in the in, in first class matches. But I have never encountered that that racism that say, a, a guy would come up to me and say, Man, springs you black or you this or you black this or, or you black. <coughs> I, I used to to lie at the bar called partners in Potter's and Potter's and, and and the everybody there were white Africans people apart from myself. And the cleaners. And a guy came in one day and he was playing pool. And some Afrikaans locals were, were having a couple of drinks and stuff. And the guy said, the only thing that black looks good on is an eight ball. Wow. And 
two African guys got up and asked him to leave. Mm -hmm. He said that we do not tolerate that type of behavior down here. I said, well, well, in South African, on my behalf, and I didn't say a word. Mm. I did not say I, I, I did not say, say a word. So it was that, that, was, that was the closest, really. But when it came to cricket, people dealt with cricket. People knew who you are, who you were, who you are. Right. So they didn't get they knew you were here for a purpose. You were you, you were not a threat to them in in in, in any way. You're not taking anything away from them. You were, you were enhancing what they had in a manner of speaking. So I coach at the school, I coach at the university, and I also coach at, before I finished, I coach at the club. Yeah, okay. Um, has, has yes, sir. Anything further you want to contribute because we're going to start to wrap up pretty soon? Yes. Hendy, if you had to look back, right, at your life through Combermere and your cricket life, etc., what, and you had to speak to a young Henderson, going into school, say, at 11, 12 years old, what would you say to that, Henderson? I would say, son, you, you've chosen well. You have chosen well. You know, and it, 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 as well as being lucky, it, privileged as well, too. Lucky to be there, you know. Um, privileged at the other end, for it had have happened, and still maintain the resources, the camaraderie, the, 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 the respect for the school, the respect for your, for your fellow men, and still drive through. I have met common mirrors in Scotland. I have met the common mirrors in Wales. I have met a common mirror in, in, in the middle of Johannesburg. Dr. Clark, speaking African, the black man, and then when he asked Mr. Phillips, one of the media leaders on opposite, or any, he did not have any Barbados were in the crowd, you know. He asked if any common mirrors were in the crowd. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. He said there he, he was one, mm -hmm. Dr. Clark. And I go into the man, yeah, I am a common mirror. I must see your common mirror. Are you, are you, they were, you, they were them? <laughs> <laughs> I drinks in my soul and so drinks in the world. In Scotland, likewise, you know, you meet a man and a guy uh, drove me from Aberdeen to Perth one night because it was a common mirror. Wow. That was a hundred kilometers. So it is what the school continues to do. The influence, you know, hopefully positive influence can be maintained. I know the school now may be different to, to, to how we first came and, and, and saw it. But once we got the discipline, and people will see being at Common Mirror as, as, a, as a tremendous experience as opposed to be a burden. You know, I may get it Common Looking forward to coming to Common Mirror. They may not be the best academic, but, but who needs to be? You may be the best person at the back end. And people yeah. will learn at different stages. You know, and you got to give them the 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 the, the common mayor academic board for scholarships still got a lot of room there. Definitely. But you go to schools, you go to schools that have got three or four academic boards for scholarships. But when you look at the red, the rounded person, you want you want five or six as a as a, as a boards to put those rounded people who pass through common mayor. But I would say to myself, I would say, man, well done. You you chose well. You chose well. Thank Thank you. Anything further? No, I, I, I just, um, you know, as I, as I said before, you know, I really uh, applaud Hendy for all of what he's done and is doing. And I wish him continued success in, in, his, in his endeavors. Um, you know, uh, we, 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 we are overdue for uh, a beverage at some point. So we must make that reality. So yes. I, I'm still, I, I, I did tell you I was traveling. I'm still um, up north. So. I'll be I'll be home on on Wednesday and be at sports on Friday, so I'll be around. So you know you will catch up and you know continue the good work, man. Thank you very much. All right, and this to close off. Uh, what advice would you give now to um, viewers, especially the youth that might be interested in playing first class class cricket? <coughs> The advice I would give is obviously you, you got to work hard. You, you got to be disciplined, and, and my definition of discipline is a, is about doing the right thing unsupervised. That is my definition. Um, you you will get a lot of distractions, and some attractions are positive, but some are negative. Um, you got to ensure that you have some type of guidance, some type of proper guidance, good advice, good drive, good direction, right? And once you start to do well, again you will get all types of things coming at you. You got to do, you got to pick your team. You got to pick your team that you need to move forward with. You will have to drop off some people off your board. You will have to get rid of certain things. But that focus is vitally important. Okay, unfortunately, no. We've we've come to the end of our of our hour. These 
these live streams usually become so um, interesting and involved that you lose track of the time, but we try very hard to, to keep it on schedule. So, Henderson, thank you very much. It has been a real pleasure um, to connect with you and learn more about your life from being a teenager to the island's um, first class cricket player and, and coach, and coaching all around the world um, with some of the world's best cricketers. Henderson, to you, we say very well done and up and on. Up and on. Up, up and on, on, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Up and on.